okay then uh, the patient's comfort this is more of a swallowing if the patient is able to swallow very well uh, and uh, speak very well uh, the patients will be more comfortable and it will be very uh, easy for us or uh, the patient's outcome will be very good and uh, we can just decannulate and progress the tracheostomy tracheostomy progression is something which is um, done it is a process of taking the patient off the tracheostomy tube okay so we have put in a tracheostomy tube slowly we are weaning the patient off tracheostomy tube and we will be removing the tracheostomy tube that is called the tracheostomy progression so during the uh, uh, process of tracheostomy progression the patient should be taught and made comfortable with a lot of things so we need to assess the swallowing if we take off the tracheostomy tube or if we try uh, to deflate the cuff we must make sure the patient has a adequate swallowing okay or a uh, Uh, swallowing disability will cause more of uh, aspiration and it doesn't uh, fit the purpose of a tracheostomy de uh, de uh, cuff decannulation uh, deflation okay so um, we should keep assessing the swallowing there can be a video fluorescent scope which is uh, put in and we can directly visualize the uh, uh, vocal cords one before doing the uh, deflation cuff deflation uh, and the patient swallowing is assessed by a swallow speech therapist also we can allow the patient to take in uh, first liquid semi solids something which can be assessed directly uh, in person when we are there under supervision we can do it if we think there are if we uh, suspect any aspiration we can even give some colored uh, food to the patient to see whether the secretions are colored after this patient swallowed or I, the patient is taking some time to swallow then the time and uh, the nature in which there is a difficulty we need to keep assessing that until we are very sure of uh, the patient swallowability uh, cuff deflation of tracheostomy should not be considered nutrition nutrition is very very important uh, so patient's uh, nutrition uh, needs to be assessed from admission till discharge so uh, the patient's outcome is better if their uh, nutrition is good when the patient is on a tracheostomy tube uh, if the patient is able to swallow very well oral intake should be uh, encouraged as soon as possible enteral tube can also be there there is something called catch up feeds which we do so the patients uh, will be trying and taking in uh, they will be encouraged to take in oral feeds if the oral feeds are not adequate throughout the day then uh, nocturnal catch up feeds through the rail tube can be given uh, this gives the patients confidence to take in more uh, oral intake one second thing is that uh, when the oral intake is adequate we can stop the rail tube uh, feeding and take the rail tube off so that the patient is uh, going to uh, have a full a uh, proper oral intake uh, without any tubes so parenteral nutrition is also considered when the patient is uh, having any uh, issues with his gut so nutrition should be always nutrition hydration should be always addressed in any patient with tracheostomy so communication is very very important uh, communication is uh, important because it gives the patient uh, a very psychological um, um uh, comfort uh, it is like uh, the patient will improve very well once they start to communicate they feel very comfortable and uh, they get more confident rather confident on uh, um, how they are and the tubal um, progression tracheostomy tube progression goes uh, easy when they start to communicate so that we can understand what their issues are with the tube so how do we communicate to them uh, cuff deflation if the cuff is deflated air passes from uh, the lungs or the lower airways to the glottis making uh, the glottis move and they can talk okay so on and off uh, intermittent cuff deflation can be tried and fenestrated tracheostomy tube is very useful in this situation when the uh, fenestrated inner cannula is put the patient can even talk with the tracheostomy in situation tracheostomy tube in situ even with the cuff in situ and uh, down sizing of the tracheostomy tube if the tube is fitting very snugly we can go down on sizes like 6 uh, so that there is more uh, space around the tube uh, in the trachea so that air passage is better from the trachea to the uh, vocal cords making the patient talk so intermittent finger occlusion after cuff deflation is very very important uh, it can be tried there can there are a specialized speaking valves which can be uh, used for making the patient talk so uh, facilitating communication is uh, is what we uh, uh, it is what the whole uh, 
um, um, objective is about if the patient starts communicating then that is good if the patient is going to be on ventilator for quite some time even communication can be can be uh, uh, used uh, can be encouraged or facilitated and if the patient is um, or uh, tolerating cuff deflation that is really very good uh, it makes our job easier but they are not uh, tolerating cuff deflation then we need to use uh, speaking inner cannula like there is there are some tubes called blom track which helps the patient to even talk when the patient uh, uh, has not uh, tolerated the cuff deflation okay so speaking on tracheostomy tubes we use and there are um, in the subglottic suction we can insufflate some oxygen and make the vocal cords vibrate so that whatever the patient uh, tries to speak and the air or uh, the artificial insufflation just makes the patient to talk or communicate okay these are the uh, speaking valves called the passive valve which takes in air through uh, it becomes a one way so uh, the patient will have the air going into the uh, valve and the exhalation will be through the glottis so that it is like a one way valve causing speech so the breathing is also not affected and in patients who cannot close uh, or occlude the uh, tracheostomy with the finger like patients who are paralyzed they can use uh, in those patients these uh, speaking valves work better so in certain patients we should not be using these speaking valves uh, like uh, under without supervision particularly when the patient cannot have a cuff deflation one secondary uh, thing is uh, when there is uh, air uh, airway obstruction if the patient is having um, if the patient is uh, getting arrhythmias if they are unstable uh, hemodynamics laryngectomy patient if the patient is not able to cooperate if they are very anxious they might uh, um, feel suffocated and that uh, communication will not go well and that will even um, make them less confident so communication in non ventilated patients uh, as we discussed cuff deflation intermittent finger occlusion fenestrated tracheostomy tubes and speaking valves okay then um, non verbal communication even if the if the speaking valves are not available we can at least uh, encourage communication through their facial expression uh, gestures we can just give them a picture board so that they spot uh, they uh, just show what they want and it will be easier for the communication because they shouldn't feel that they cannot communicate because the tracheostomy is there 